Here's a problem about batteries produced by a particular company. We'll solve the problem by using the six steps outlined in our text. This is a matter of understanding the problem. We are interested in all the batteries that are sold by this particular company. What is the variable that we're interested in for each of these batteries? Sold to the government or not? That leads us to a parameter of interest for the population. What is the proportion P all the batteries that are sold to the government. The random experiment is to take a random sample of 523 batteries. The random variable is the proportion of batteries in that random sample that are sold to the government. So this indeed is a variable. It depends on the random sample that we take. Step two is to state the hypotheses and to create a three distribution diagram for the problem. In a previous video, we developed the idea of a three distribution diagram. In this video, we're going to use this three distribution diagram to help us solve this stated problem. We want to test the claim that population proportion is greater than 40%. Of course, once we've got a alternative hypothesis, the research hypothesis that P is greater than 40%, then we've got the null hypothesis, which is everything else, that P is less than or equal to 40%. Our concern will be that it's equal to. Since a level of significance is not mentioned in the problem, we will assume that it's 5%. Now, in a hypothesis test, we begin with the assumption that the null hypothesis is true. We know that our sample size is 523 and that our number of successes is 227. This is a clever ploy to assume the null hypothesis is true because now we can say that this p-value is 40 percent and once we know that p-value we can find the q-value. p is the probability of success and q is the probability of failure so q will be 1 minus p. Of course we can find the p-hat for our individual sample is going to be r divided by n so because we know what P and Q and N are, we can calculate the standard error, which is the standard deviation of the distribution of these sample proportions. We know what our P hat is, so we can calculate the test statistic. Because this is an upper tail test, we know that because of the research hypothesis, the alternative hypothesis is greater than, then what we want to find out is what this area is above that test statistic. This three distribution diagram is the road map to the calculations needed for the hypothesis test. We're assuming the null hypothesis, so P will be 40%. Our sample size is 523 and the number of successes is 227. We can therefore calculate our P hat, which is R divided by N. I'm curious to know what that P hat is, so let's shout that out. I'm using RStudio as my compiler, so this is what the output looks like. It shows what the script is that's being run, and there's the shout out for the P hat. It's about 43. Now that's giving us some evidence that the research hypothesis is true. The P hat is 43% and the research hypothesis is 40%. We want to find out what SE is, but before we can do that, we'll need to know what Q is. So we'll add this next line in our R code. We now have enough information to calculate our standard error. The rubric for your written reports asks you to shout out what that standard error is. Now we know all the pieces to be able to calculate our test statistic. The rubric for your written reports asks you to shout out what the z-value is. So now R knows what this test statistic is, and we need to find this area in that upper tail. We have two tools in R that help us calculate probabilities in a standard normal curve. They are the p-norm and the q-norm function. Now remember that the p-norm tells you what an area is if you know a value on the uh, z-axis, whereas the q-norm tells you what the number on the z-axis is if you know an area. In this case, we want to use a p-norm. The problem is that p-norm always tells you the area below the particular value. So if we did p-norm of z, it would tell us this area rather than the upper tail that we need. We know that the area under the curve is 1, so this upper tail will be 1 minus the p-norm of z. 
So we'll put out that in our R script. The p-value will be 1 minus the p-norm of z, and we'll shout out that p-value. So when we run the script, there we get the results with the shouted out values. Pay attention to the p-value. We're going to need to compare that to our alpha. Okay, let's put it all together in a written report. Here we've restated the problem. There's step one that we've already shown in the video. In step two, we state the hypotheses and we show the three distribution diagram that's the roadmap for doing our calculations. In step three, we state and check our assumptions. In step four, we provide our client with the R script. There's our p-value. In step five, we state the statistical interpretation, which is because our p-value was greater than 5%, we failed to reject the null hypothesis. And finally, we state the real-world world interpretation, which is there is not sufficient sample evidence to support the claim that the company sells more than 40% of their batteries to the government. The reason why is if we assume the null hypothesis, which is saying that they're that they're not selling more than 40%, that it would not have been unusual to get the results that we got, even though our P hat was a little bit bigger than the 40%, it could have happened because of sampling error.